What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network here on the new reading of the fantastic Bitcoin Optech newsletter. And again, thank you very much to all the contributors and sponsors of this phenomenal open source group. Today, newsletter number three on June 10th, 2018. This week's newsletters includes news and action items about minimum fees and the upcoming Bitcoin Core release, a special feature on a Schnorr signature proposal and a write-up of the recent Building on Bitcoin conference in Lisbon. Action items. Bitcoin Core minimum relay fee may be reduced in the next major release. Ensure your software does not make unsafe assumptions about one Satoshi per virtual byte being the lowest possible floor. See the news section below for more information. Ensure that your software for calculating transaction size for dynamic fees computes signature size accurately or at least uses a worst case assumption of Bitcoin signatures being 72 bytes. See the news section below for more information. As previously mentioned in the newsletter, announced would happen the Bitcoin alert key was released along with the disclosure of vulnerability affecting Bitcoin Core 0.12 and earlier. Altcoins, <coughs> shitcoins, may be affected. If you have not yet checked your infrastructure for, affer for affected services, it is advised to do so now. See newsletter one for more details. Dashboard items. Transaction fees remain very low. As of this writing, fee estimates for, confirming to, for confirmation two or more blocks in the future remain at roughly the level of the default minimum relay fee in Bitcoin Core. It is a good time to consolidate inputs. Block production recovery. Following last week's news about flooding in China affecting minor operations, Bitcoin block production seems to have recovered in the expected level of about one block every 10 minutes. Feature news. Schnorr signature proposed Bitcoin improvement protocol. In a post of the, to the Bitcoin mailing list, Peter Woolley submitted a draft specification for a Schnorr-based signature format. The goal of the specification is to hopefully get everyone in agreement about what Schnorr signatures will look like on a Bitcoin before work begins on the actual soft fork, so that the BIP does not propose specific new opcodes, SegWit witness flags, soft fork activation method, and anything else necessary to make this change part of the Bitcoin consensus rule. However, it is possible to say what this signature format will provide if it becomes the form of Schnorr signature adopted by Bitcoin. Full compatibility with existing Bitcoin private key and public keys, meaning that existing hierarchical deterministic wallets that upgrade won't need to generate a new recovery seat. Number two. Roughly 10% smaller signatures, providing a slight increase to blockchain capacity as Schnorr is adopted. Batch verification of signatures, providing a roughly 2x speedup over individual verification for blocks full of Schnorr signature. This mainly affects nodes initial syncing or catching up after being offline. Full compression and significantly improved privacy for multi-sig use cases, but with required interaction. An unlimited number of participants can create a single 33-byte public key and 64-byte signature from the combination of their individual public keys and signature. Using secure multi-sig with the same efficiency of single-sig and an increase their privacy by making multi-sig look like single-sig. However, the scheme requires multiple step interaction between the wallets participating in the multi-sig, both for creating the public key and the signature. Additionally, privacy-focused use cases. Examples include 
increasing privacy for Lightning Network, more private atomic swaps, either cross-chain when both chains support Schnorr, or on the same chain as part of a coin mixing protocol, and fully private signature oracles, services that wait for some times to happen in real life, like which teams wins the World Cup, and then providing a signature committing to that outcome. For example, allowing Alice and Bob to settle a bet on chain or in a Lightning Network gen. Many of these cases also improve efficiency compared to alternatives that use current Bitcoin script. One thing of note is that the BIP proposal is a method of signature aggregation between multiple inputs in the same transaction. This was a desired feature that could allow consolidation transactions, coin joins, and other high input transactions to be much more efficient than they are now. But as the author of the proposal notes, with the emergence of so many ideas for improvements to Bitcoin script execution, that is masked, taproot, graft root, new sick hash modes, multi-signature schemes, etc. There is simply too much to do everything at once. Since aggregation really inter interacts with all other things, it seems like the better choice to pursue later. News. Discussion about minimum relay fees several years ago, when the Bitcoin price was a fraction of its current value in US dollar terms, Bitcoin Core set the minimum relay fee to one Satoshi per byte, now virtual byte. With the increase in price and other network changes, several developers discussed lowering the minimum relay fees. Gregory Maxwell is planning to open a pull request to Bitcoin Core that may roughly have that value although the exact amount has not been determined yet. This may include in the next major version of Bitcoin Core. If so, it'll mean that you may be able to create cheaper consolidation transactions once the change has been well deployed. However, it also means if you don't upgrade any node you see for the detecting unconfirmed transactions, they may not see unconfirmed transactions with lower fee rates unless you change the defaults. This could affect the information you display to your users. Those nodes will still see all confirmed transactions in valid blocks. Note that to lower the minimum relay fee in Bitcoin Core below is default. You need to change two settings shown Below shown are the two settings that with their default values in Bitcoin Core version 0.16.1. To lower the values, change both of them to the same value. But be aware that reducing them too far, perhaps to less than a tenth of the default, exposes you to bandwidth wasting attacks and reduces BIP-152 compact block efficiency for your node. And these changes to change are the minimum relay transaction fee and the incremental relay fee. If your organization produces end-user software, you may wish to ensure that it works with transactions and fee estimates set below the value of one Satoshi per byte. Please contact Optac if you need more information about minimum relay fees. Unreliable transactions. At least two major services were identified as creating transactions with fee rates below the current minimum due to a misunderstanding about the maximum size of a Bitcoin signature, which is 72 bytes. Bitcoin signatures vary in size with half of all randomly generated signatures being 72 bytes, slightly less than half being 71 bytes, and the small remainder being 70 bytes or smaller. At a guess, 
the developers of some software looked at the randomly selected signature, saw that it was 71 bytes, and assumed all signatures would be 71 bytes. However, when the software generated a 72-byte signature, this makes the actual size of the transaction one byte larger per signature than the estimated size, causing the fees paid per byte to be slightly lower than expected. This did not cause significant problems when the fee estimates were high, but now that the fee estimates are near the default minimum relay fee of one Satoshi per byte, any transaction created within a fee slightly below that may not be relayed to miners and so remain unconfirmed indefinitely. It is recommended that organizations check their software to ensure it at least makes the worst case assumption of signatures being 72 bytes. The upcoming Bitcoin Core 0.17 feature freeze. Next week, developers plan to stop merging new features for the next major version of Bitcoin Core. That the features already present will be further tested and documented. Translations will be uploaded and other parts of the release process followed. If your organization will be depending on the future of on the future in the next six months, now could be the time, could be your last chance to ensure it's part of version 0.17. Features currently not yet merged, but likely to be added to Bitcoin Core version 0.17 include scan the transaction outset, RPC, that allows searching the unspat transaction output set for addresses or scripts intended for use with address sweeping, for example, finding funds that you own and bringing them into one of your current wallets. BIP174 partially signed Bitcoin transactions support a protocol for exchanging information about Bitcoin transactions between wallets and facilitate better interoperability between multi-sig wallets, hot and cold wallets, coin joins, and other corporate wallets. Delayed transaction sending by network group, a proposal that is hoped will make it harder for spy nodes to determine which client first broadcast the transaction, indicating it might have been the spender. Efficient re-implementation of the Electrum server. In an announcement to the Bitcoin Dev mailing list, this week was a claim that a Rust-based re-implementation of the Electrum server is much more efficient than the current Python version. Optech has not performed any testing on this and cannot confirm. Don't trust, verify. But Electrum server is known to be used by several Bitcoin businesses, both internally and hosted, and perhaps of their customers. So some readers of this newsletter may wish to investigate. Building on Bitcoin was, bi was a Bitcoin technology conference that took place in Lisbon last week. It was well attended by both Bitcoin protocol developers and application engineers. A video is available, as are several transcripts by Bitcoin developer Brian Bishop Kanjur, who is the fastest typer in Bitcoin. The following talks may be, may be of partial interest to Bitcoin optech companies. Merchant Adoption by Sergey Kotlier, CEO of BitRefill, gave a personal account of the free market spike at the end of last year, an important user experience consideration for Bitcoin and Lightning payments, and BitRefill's experience in integrating Lightning. This talk was fascinating due to the real-world empirical data that Sergey shared and his first-hand experience of fees, scaling, and Lightning. Designed Lightning Wallets for the Bitcoin User by Patricia Estevia. Stavbo gave a talk about UX consideration when extending Bitcoin wallets to support Lightning payments. An increasing talk for any business that is beginning to integrate Lightning payments into an existing Bitcoin product. Blind signatures and in scriptless script by Jonas Nick, 
spoke about using Schnorr signatures as the basis of doing blind coin swaps, where a server cannot link coin joins or exchanging Xcash tokens or eCash tokens on Bitcoin or Lightning, among other things. This talk presents leading edge thinking about what's possible with scriptless scripts, and the idea presented are quite a long way from being inter implemented on Bitcoin. However, it is interesting to see some of the new applications that will be unlocked by adopting Schnorr signatures into Bitcoin. Lightning Network Story. Fabrice Durian presented a history of the development of the Lightning Network. A lot of interesting background for anyone planning to integrate and use the Lightning payments. CoinJoin XT and other techniques for deniable transfer by Adam Gibson talked about CoinJoin XT, a method for improving privacy in Bitcoin by mixing payments and breaking transaction graph analysis. Many wallets are planning to implement some form of coin join, so Bitcoin engineers should be at least familiar with the high-level concepts. Peers, subscribe to the newsletter because the Bitcoin Optech Group is consolidating and condensing the most valuable information that is happening in Bitcoin. And I further highly suggest that you read the amazing transcripts of the fantastic conference building on Bitcoin, which is a must watch and a must read for all Bitcoiners. And you have only gathered a taste of the very few selected talks here on the Bitcoin Optech newsletter. Again, thank you endlessly to the amazing supporters and contributors to the Bitcoin Operations Technology Group who are providing this highly, highly valuable service of condensing all the very, very complex subjects here in Bitcoin into a brief and weekly newsletter. Piers, thank you very much for joining me here on the World Crypto Network and see you tomorrow for the next show. Bye-bye.